Hello, everyone. Welcome to our very special evening of Drink and Draw Social Club. Tonight, we have a very, very exciting guest. Uh, the legendary Mr. Greg Hildebrand is with us. Tonight, we have a very... And there he is. Wow. Greg. technology we had this evening. Hello, Greg. Thank you for joining us this evening. And of course, we have some other ne'er-do-wells with us as well. The fabulous Mr. Dan Pan Ocean. Why, Hello. Wow, it's magical. <laughs> it's magical. A couple of Johnsons. We'll start with Jeff. Good idea. Hi, Hi everyone. <laughs> and there's some Dave guy, his cousin. All right, let's add Dave. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then back from his one week hiatus, the immortal Joe Casada also joins us. Oh, thank God for Joe. <laughs> yes. Oh. Hey, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> The Dave thing is killing me. It's <laughs> terrifying. It's the most eye contact Dave has had with the show in weeks. Yeah. I just figured he's a better looking dude. He is a better looking dude by far. Very handsome. <laughs> Why do you happen to have something like that, Dave? For reference. Oh, yeah. And loneliness. Is that a problem, Anakin? Uh oh. Joe's, Joe's mic is giving me a little feedback. He's turned into a robot in the store. Uh oh. Oh, that's good. We got to take Joe out having little difficulties while he works on his um, mic settings. But um, it's an well, interesting Greg, effect. You have to admit it's an interesting effect. It does sound cool. Hey, Greg, thanks for joining us. How do you uh, know Joe Casada anyway? Oh, uh, oh, I mean, I went to Marvel uh, back in '94, I think, and we did a trading card set. I remember those. Yeah. And then we, you know, we met, and then we, uh, when he was working on Ash with Jimmy, and uh, I remember doing a character, Joe, they were doing a kind of guest appearance thing with characters, and, and we had, we came up with a character and kind of introduced him into the Ash book. And well, we met back then, you know, we've been friends ever since. Yeah. Cool. Uh oh. Joe, your mic is still off a little bit. Uh, Joe's, Joe's got a new uh, system here. Uh, 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 <laughs> 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 He's from the future. Yes. <laughs> 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 All right, we're gonna have to remove you again, Joe. I've never heard. It's like you got you got Jeff Johnson's mic set up. All right. <laughs> like a member of Daft Punk. That's, yeah, that's not fair. Well, yeah. Joe's figuring stuff out. I wanted to geek out a little bit. So, Greg, um, I actually have two copies of your book, Usherak, that you did a while ago. Yeah. One I have basically copied every drawing out of, of which is it's in pieces, and then one I have just for myself yeah. to read and enjoy. Um, this book was amazing. It's a fantastic art all the way through, and fun story, too. Thank so you. what's holding it together now, Jeff? Um, love and reverence. <laughs> it looks like you really uh, got to work on that thing. Oh yeah, well that's I needed. It. I, I beat this one up so bad when I was younger that I actually had to go and find another one because these pages are starting to fall apart. Please be kind to that other copy. Oh, I, I, I treat it better than you treat your child. <laughs> I don't know whether I should, I should go into that whole story because it'll take too long. Uh, no. We have time. Is there lawsuits? Uh, no. Okay. No. Yeah, but but. The thing is, we had Tim and I done three Colton calendars for Valentine books, and then we thought, uh, well, this should be a movie, live action. So we talked to Ian Summers, who was the art director back then uh, at Valentine, and he's let me check on it, found out that Saul Zantz actually had optioned it, and they were do, doing it in animation. So we said, well, what the hell, let's come up with our own story, and we'll mm -hmm. look forward that as a film. And that, that's, what, that's what started Urshuak. So we had the fourth token calendar to do for Valentine. We stuck it on the shelf and you see if we could spitball out a storyline. Tim and I did very quickly and I got my friend Jerry Nichols involved from Detroit in the old days. Jerry was working for the Detroit Free Press back then as an artist, not as a writer, but he had always been writing and wanted to do work, you know, do something and, 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 and together with us. So we, we started spitballing out the story and laying it all out in, in the way that I was writing it, Tim was writing it with the former storyboards. So we, we did a thousand storyboards telling our story visually. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it was totally insane. That's why I lost my sense of smell. 
Is what? We, Ooh. <laughs> lock, we locked ourselves up in a room, basically, in my studio with ad markers doing the storyboards, you know? Wow. And mm -hmm. Tim and I both completely found both going on. And in any event. Hey, Dan, cut to me. Uh, just so I'll, I'll, I'll flip through and show some of the art. Okay. Oh. So, yeah, that's the Amazon uh, Zandura. That's the Amazon island. So we, we kind of like came up with all these, you know, it was like uh, basically simple quest thing. You know what I mean? Unify all these disparate forces on the continent and go fight the bad guy, Torgon, the Death Lord of Gagara. You know, Ooh, like, that's cool. Well, it's a great book. Um, not only are there tons and tons of black and white illustrations, these, these amazing color pieces that's in the book. And the elf citizen. When did that come out? Uh, 1980, I think it was. 79 is the copyright in there. Wow. Do you know what that one reminded me of, Jeff? Do you remember that Dinos Dinotopia? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It reminded me a little bit of that, you know. Yeah, this, this book is, is loaded. Here, here, look at this. This is a totally crazy story. Tim and I were developing this thing, though. We had developed our, our allied band, which was to be like Ao on the Elf Prince with the blonde hair, blue eye, white elf, with a short white tunic of white, you know, pants and boots and his magic sword, and Hugh, the, the masculine male dominant figure, the, uh, Gorpy, who was a seven foot tall Sasquatch type character, uh, uh, Zyra the Amazon princess, uh, and Torgon the Death Lord of Golgoroth, who was a seven foot tall, uh, all clad in black armor, totally covered, uh, so you couldn't see his face. Mm -hmm. And then we get a call from this agency to do the Star Wars poster. <laughs> and we go in and pick up the job, and I'm, Tim and I are looking at all these photos. I say, "What the hell? There's, there's Torgon is Darth Vader. There's Aowan is Luke Skywalker. There's our hairy guy who is the Chewbacca. It, it was freaky. It was like nobody had seen what we were working on except Tim and me. So there's a, some kind of a strange synchronistic co-creation that occurred." Wow. Yeah. Or, or uh, George Lucas had some spies at the uh, Hildebrandt Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't put it past him. It was, no. Then we tried to get it off the ground through the William Morris Agency. It, it, John Dykstra got involved. He was committed to the project for a year or so. And it just kind of sank under its own undoability eventually. Because uh -huh. they, they were afraid of doing a fantasy film. Everything had to be space back then, you know? And to turn this thing into a, into a space opera, well, what's the, what's the point? I mean, you know, it's old magic. It's sword and sorcery. What the hell? And But they wanted to see what Conan was going to do because that was just underway at that mm -hmm. time, this Conan film. And so everybody just said, well, we, we can't uh, we can't deal with this. Besides, it's going to cost you money. So that kind of like came to an end. But, oh. That's too bad. It would have been great. Yeah. Would have been fun. Jeff would have exploded, apparently, judging by the way. He... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, yeah. I have no idea. I always find that out of, it, it looked like it was a disaster. I've used up all my money that I got from the advance on Earth Rack from Bat Bantam, which we were, you know, flying high on. And I was using it to get this film off the ground because I had, had no knowledge or sense of, 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 of uh, you know, using other people's money to forward the project. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. Gene wasn't with Gene yet. Gene, uh, we hadn't met yet. So it's kind of a mastermind. Yeah, totally. And so I just kind of like ran out of everything. And, and, oh. and, uh, Basically, Gene ended the picture, and we started. I started a whole new career. So I think had I not ran out completely and crashed in a sense, that I would never gotten met with Gene, and we would have taken off into a whole other direction. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think out of you know, it's like the Phoenix out of the ashes, sort of like thing. You know? Yeah, it was it's like Jeff's fun. Jeff's story, except without the rising part. Yeah, <laughs> right. I like to float just the same level. Yeah. But it's very similar. Really Whatever. Yeah. Hey, hey, here's hey. another thing. Wait, just I got I got to do this shit. I got stuff up. So Hold on, we're gonna switch back. Ahead. Joe's mic is working though, Greg. Is, is it is it working now? Can you hear it's me? It's working. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm so very happy. convention people. Oh, you did the Star Wars poster. You know. Yeah. 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 They say, but mm -hmm. you may know me for that. But do you know me for this? What? Hey. Toilet training in less than a day. Yeah. Yeah. That's a money black, maker right there. What wonderful black and white, you know, wine illustrations like this in the book that was done. That's in, what put you on the map, I think. Yeah, 1974, right? Yeah. <laughs> very, very little known fact. A precursor uh, to Star yeah. Wars. Very little known oh, fact to, to, to people outside of the comics community. When when comics creators uh, are in need of toilet training 
information. <laughs> it you happens know, like, a lot. Like, like, yeah, like, like when my daughter was born, first person I called was Greg. I said, Greg, you wrote the book on this. <laughs> Why you read the book on this? So, what do you help me out here? What is it? <laughs> I, if, if there's a chapter on washing your hands afterwards, I think we should send it to Frank Thierry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Listen, his hands are the least of his problems. Uh, <laughs> oh, gross. Hey, Greg, do you, happen to, do you happen to drink at all? Um, are you drinking on this show? You don't have to, mind you. Well, yeah, I've got my coffee cup. Oh, all right. Let's see, hold on. Let's zoom in on that. I think Jeff's going to want a copy of that. <laughs> at least at least two copies. Yeah. Make America rational again. Yeah, that would be nice. Well, let's not get crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, now you're asking for the world. Hey, yeah. hey Greg. Hey, Greg. I mean, what, I... I love spending time with you and Gina. I especially love hearing, like every time I hang out with you, I, I think I know every story. And, you, and every time I hear a new story about, you know, people you've met, things you've done. I mean, from the, the, the Trans-Siberian Orchestra to, yeah. uh, you know, all the work you do with Tim, to even your early days, you know, as a struggling artist. But I also love the people that you've met. Can, can you tell us a little bit about some of the more interesting people that you've come across in your uh, in your lifetime, George Pal, you know that name, the Time Machine, the War of the World. He was like, I adulated those movies with the puppet films that he did, right? You know, Tommy the Tuba, John Henry, and uh, oh, man. yeah. What? What's that? Hold on. What the hell is that? See, it's more Joe Casada business. Yep, that was Joe. Oops. Yeah, <laughs> Joe, that was you. Sorry. Are you there, Joe? Well, he's still there. Yeah, he can. He can. He can hear in, but his mic. His mic's giving him a little tr trouble. He just switched studios. He got. Um, yeah. Basically, I think he's. I think it's called Riker Studio. He's calling it Riker's Studio. Riker. Yeah. You mean like the prison? Uh, well, I mean, give it a name. I don't know what uh, Jeff. I don't. I don't know the geography. You know, in All New right. York. Okay. I'm surprised they were able to catch Joe. He's so clever. He is fast and elusive. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, back to the story. Yeah, yeah, back to the story. Sorry about it. Joe's trying to sabotage it. He likes the attention on him, and it's shifted now, so it bothers him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we went to Tim and I went to George Powell's home in Beverly Hills to pitch our Earth racket. We had we had an audio visual presentation, and we also had a, a you know a graphic book presentation and he listened to it watched it took praised our presentation and he was just a really sweet guy he was fantastic really really kind man and he uh he then he was developing a script for um uh, Hieronymus Bosch oh wow and he was do also doing a book and he wanted Tim and me to illustrate the book and he wanted us to work on paintings for the movie oh and that would have been that would have been horrifying yeah, it's sad to say he died a few months later. But the thing is, to be able to meet one of your icon, you know, your your childhood heroes, and to have him pitch you to come and work on a project like that, Hieronymus Bosch, the place says, you know, that's pretty cool. Like, like, and he was, you could see, he was moving in another direction that was moving away from more, the more kid oriented stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, I mean, Hieronymus Bosch is a is a hell of a departure from kid stuff. Yeah, amazing. So, it, I mean, you know, he was fantastic, and he was a sweet guy. Meeting John Dykstra when he was working, uh, uh, he had his own studio, Apogee, right after that he, he left, whatever happened there with him and Lucas and everything, after Star Wars, and he was working on Battlestar Galactica, and John was really enthusiastic about working on Earth Act too. He, he got committed to it. And we, 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 were, we were going around Hollywood. We met every everything. Pitched it at them. So I'm not the only one that was a huge fan. A what? I'm not the only one that was a huge fan. A huge fan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was everybody seemed to love the book. Yeah. Oh, I, well, I mean, yeah, he, he did. He got committed. He said, I want to, he had done, done Star Wars and he said, I, I want to do more organic effects, which was, you know, all that kind of like stuff. And he was completely into it. And, and Dennis Linton Clark, his friend who had just done Come to Horseman. Did you see that one? And Dennis was, was doing the screen treatment. And and we thought, you know, Tim and I being so naive in Hollywood, I thought, 
God damn it, you got a name like Dykstra, and then you got Clark would just hit with a serious film. This is this means a lot. Didn't mean shit to them. Now we got oh, we got the special effects with Eric Diamond dozen. Well, wait a minute. This guy just did Star Wars. He better invented the computerized camera for God's sakes, you know? And didn't mean anything. I Ooh. thought that was really bizarre. But then even John was I haven't talked to him for years. And I keep meaning to call him. And I, you know how you do you, you say oh, I gotta get all of them before somebody conks off here, you know? And right. and you never do it, and then they conk off and you say, God damn it. So in any event. He was a genius in his whole crew, uh, Apogee. They were doing Battlestar Galactica, the TV. And right. they were fantastic. I mean, just to be with all those people over there, watch them work. And, and, and they were real troubleshooters, special effects guys. You know, they're all real troubleshooters. They figure out stuff on the spot overnight to come up with, you know, a rocket crashing in the pre digital, even though it was he was working with the computer, but there was a lot of stuff that was still alive, you know. How do you come up? With a miniature rocket this long and heavy, you're shooting, going to shoot in slow motion. It's going to go into the snow, but happen all the snow to scale. You know what I mean? Well, they they discover little glass beads. That oh, cool. When, when you shot it in slow motion, it was really scaled and broke up in a lot of detail. But you know that kind of stuff. You know they're working every day to. They, it was, those people were fantastic. So like like that, Joe. I mean, I, I can go on and on with you. You know. Bishop Fulton J. Sheen. Nobody knows who that name was. <laughs> he was a Catholic bishop. He had a TV show back in the 50s. It was ABC, CBS, and NBC. Uh, the two of the other networks had Milton Burrow was on one, and Frank Sinatra was on the other, and Sheen was on the other. And he was this very uh, traditional when it came to the, uh, the, the chain of command, you know, the... the the church establishment, but extremely progressive when it came to social reform. So he was very active in the, in that whole world. And he hired Tim and me to come from Detroit. I, I lived in Detroit, so I was born and raised in the Motor City, Motown, and to come and make films on world hunger. So I'm, oh, I'm, I'm there working as an industrial film producer for, with, with uh, Max Flesher, artist fleshers was in detroit for 10 years and some of his guys that worked on the supermans from the 40s right? wow and I, I apprenticed under the, these people so that's how i started my career and then i came Jeez. to new york to work for Dean. and suddenly i'm stuck in the middle tim and i were both like we were very naive provincial kids from detroit you know catholics very very you know not too wide in terms of the, the world knowledge you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. And we're suddenly stuck in New York City with, in this office in touch with the UN and the World Health Organization. And the, I, it was like mind-boggling. And I made a half a dozen films for him. Shot, ran, camera, did sound, edited on a movie. All about, well, it, they became kind of like Mondo films, you know, contract. Boom, 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 boom. The halves and the half knots, you know, moving into various. The last one we did was called We Are One. And it was like the bishop said, I want to film aimed at American teenagers. This is 1967 when all the shit's flying off in the country, you know? And he said, I want to film aimed at American teenagers. So we start to, we had gathered all this footage already in Africa and South America. And uh, we then, we then, it, with American kids, and we started a free flow and juxtaposition with, normally he narrate these films, and this one he has no narration. So we just use sound, real sound. We did a full, our own Foley track. And we did, you know, uh, local sounds in the scenes when we shot, and and music and and, and special effects stuff added. And it was just this kind of like a half hour, just moving in and out of contrast sequences. The boy standing at the at the water tap in South America and this favela, the slum that the water's turned on for like three hours in the morning for for one week, and all the kids line up to get their buckets filled. You know, cutting to American teenagers playing in the snow, this kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? And if people, yeah. people would see it that later we'd show the film, and they they all they all get freaked out and pissed off. What are you making me feel guilty for? I said, oh, no, no, it's not. I'm not. It's not about guilt. It's about looking at this, looking at this, looking at this, putting them together. It's just like triggering thought and discussion. You know. So anyway, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm going to be drawing here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hey, so did you want to be a filmmaker first? Is that what your first passion? Animator. Animator. I saw I saw Disney's Pinocchio when I was five. 
that's a first movie I ever saw. If you may walk to the movie theater, it was fantastic, brilliant. You know, you know those theaters back in the day in Detroit, now they're all gone. They're decay. It was it was like going into a Cecil B. the Mill set just to go to the theater downtown Detroit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then to see that film, it was like I was five years old. I had Tim and I both, we didn't know what the hell we were. We knew it was artwork. We had never seen a film before because there's no TV, you know. I mean, this is like 1945 or so, and in a, in a re release of the film. And oh my God, that was it. It was like, jeez, oh, this is. Uh, we didn't know what was going on, how it was done. And then by deductive reasoning, because you couldn't find anything out back then, now everybody finds everything, you know, you they, you could hunt for books. And we finally found the field book. I haven't seen that one. It's on the Art of Walt Disney in the library we found it. And we started to look for, we had flip books too. The big little books. I mean, do you remember those big little books? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of them, like the shadow, would have, they'd have uh, flip books in the, uh, you know, in the theory of animation. So we're at, oh. And then we finally, our parents got us a little hand crank movie projector so we could look at these castle films and, you know, live action and animation and study it frame by frame and say, oh, oh, that's what happens. And then you read the New York style of animation was straight ahead like Felix. It was like surreal. You just start drawing a figure and it would just, you just let it go that way, you know, as you drew it you progressively. But in, in the Hollywood, the West Coast was you draw your extremes. You, so you know where your action's going to end up. Then you break down in between. So we're studying all that and drawing wow. crazy as little kids. I mean, tons of stuff. And we would, I was looking for, and we, we would sit and draw. Like this, this is from about 1950. Right, let me take a look. Hold on a second, Craig. Tim, Tim or I would go through the motion that we wanted to do, and we would sit and study it and blink while we were watching it to see if we could stop each other. <laughs> can you show that? Can you show that again? It's very crude. It's very simple. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Tons of this kind of stuff, you know. And I just, I, I only found this stuff recently. Somebody had it stuck in a bread box in the attic of in the old house, and. But then here, like with this nude, I'd also go in an older buddy of mine would go and get these Andre D. Danes photo books, you know, Andre D. Danes or uh, uh, Peter Gowland. And yeah, I, Peter Gowland. Wow. I would throw him. I haven't heard in a long time. Dave, do you know who that is? No. Uh -uh. So this guy would do like um, photo photographic reference. Um, and it was like some they would call them the Gowlin girls, right? Right, yeah. right, Craig. Lots of, lots of pin up stuff, yeah. They're pin up girls, and, and I mean, he did he basically did stock photography, but it was man, it was he really shot it well. He there's still some websites where you can see yeah. some of his work, but I wish they'd archive um, all his um, all that work. I'd love to see that online, yeah. Andre de I don't know if you know that name, he's a Hungarian guy, he did tons of books. He, he did the fir those first pictures of Marilyn, those mm -hmm. very early ones of Marilyn, you know, when she was very young. And he was fantastic. I used to copy all that stuff, you know, and stuff. But animation was my first love. And that, that and Tim and I both. And we were obsessed. We were maniacally obsessed with it. I mean, it just drove it completely. And we built our own animation drawing board with a glass. And we used pegs, you know, like a loosely finder peg bar. We just oh, yeah. Them. I've worked on those. Those are great. Yeah, and, and we would animate, and then we shot it with a we, had a, we finally got a brownie eight millimeter camera, and you click off one frame if you were careful so you could shoot your animation. Did and you ever I, work with a Lucy? No, we, we would just, uh, we would just, uh, you know, we didn't use a Lucy or anything. We just, you know, we would just draw, on, you know, these sheets on, on a piece of, on a light box, you know, yeah, the light underneath. And, uh. then, and then, and then when I saw, you know, like Rocket Ship XM. That was the first sci-fi movie I saw. I don't know if you ever saw that one. That's like uh, Lloyd Bridges' first movie. It was like, it's, it, well, they land on Mars and, you know, they're all reduced to a primitive world. In, in any event, and then The Man from Planet X and then George Powell's film, When Worlds Collide, that oh, really yeah. Tim and me totally freaked out about special effects. So then we started to dig, well, how the hell is that done? And you could see it looking like a painted background and we started to find out about matte paintings, you know, on glass, mm -hmm. on the camera. But only you have to look and search and find, you know, like Popular Science, Popular Mechanics Magazine. What you go look, go to the library and dig out all this stuff. So we started getting into building miniature sets. 
my parents had moved from Detroit to Rochester, Michigan. So now we had a barn and a garage where we built sets in. And we were building miniature sets with the Martian machine coming down the street, blowing up the buildings and everything. Well, wow. it was that's, that's awesome. I mean, again, I'm still the same way. I'm 81. I'm th I think I'm as obsessed, maniacally obsessed as I was when I was a kid. <laughs> you know, awesome. you feel it, I mean, you probably all are, right? I mean, you, it's like, you know, I, I, I haven't got there yet. Oh, mm -hmm. well, I mean, that's encouraging and discouraging at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it, but the trip is fun. Sure. Oh yeah. No, I never get. I never get bored of this. I, I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly trying to improve. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. Right. As a, it's like there's this carrot that you're pursuing. You, I think intellectually, you know, you're never going to get there. Yeah. But you're still driven to get there. You know, to get. There's so it. much talent out there that. The moment you think you've you've gotten somewhere, you, you you discover someone else who's has a very unique approach, and uh, you know we're we're very lucky we live in this age. I mean, yeah, obviously yeah. we want to be the best we can, but it's it's great to see other people ach achieving things, and that that increases your your wonder and your uh, passion for for what we're doing. Every time I go to a show and I look at all the new people, it's like it's a, it's 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 first you, it's like a punch to the gut where you're out. Oh. You know, oh yeah, for a hundred percent. I feel the same way. I, I I come back inspired and uh, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, upset. Yeah, right there. That's beautiful. Your guys, I mean, you know, I see this and it's like, holy shit. Well, Jeff's a bit of a show off. You, oh, that. Oh, wait a minute. That's me. Hold on. I, I meant to go go on uh, Jeff's. Where where do you go? Oh, Jeff. Jeff got bumped. Looked like he was frozen. Yeah. Huh. Maybe, maybe uh, a lot of technical difficulties today. This is interesting. No, I, so kicked, I kicked I, him out. So, Joe, Joe, you sound good. Yeah, well, once I just booted Jeff on purpose. I said, screw it. Enough is enough with him. I mean, honestly, yeah. Jeff was asking too many questions. Um, <laughs> he's becoming a little annoying, if you ask me. It was all about Jeff. It wasn't even about Greg. It was just all about Jeff. You, just, you know what, Greg? A lot of times Jeff asks these questions, and he just wants to hear his voice. He wants to hear his own voice. It's annoying. Look at here's yeah. the other book. Here's the here's the very first book that Tim and I ever illustrated. The man who found out why the story of Gregor Mendel. You know who that was? The, no. Austrian, the, the father of genetics. Oh. He was an Austrian priest, and I did these kind of like black and white line drawings in the book, like this sort of like thing. Dan spent most of high school in the principal's office. He missed out on biology. <laughs> yeah, anyway, here. True. <laughs> hey, hey, Greg, can you can you talk about uh, somebody? I, I think I think Dan, Dan at least will understand the reference. Um, didn't you paint a mural for Michael Jackson at one point? Paint a mural? No, no. We were talking about painting a picture. <laughs> oh, okay. I met him, or he 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 got. Uh, he, when the hell was this? This was like nineteen ninety. 89. People from his office kept calling Gene. Right. She had Unicorn Publishing at that time. And, and my studio was right there in the, in the you know, the publishing company. And uh, they kept saying, well, Michael wants to talk to Greg. And she said, oh, oh fine. Good, good. So then they call back another month. Michael wants to talk to Greg. Finally, it comes down to it. After three months of this, um, I'm working at my studio. Gene's at home. It was on a Saturday. And she calls me. She said, Michael wants to talk to you now. He, he was on, what the hell tour was that? He was on the, one of the bad tour, I think. And he uh, he was in England. And so he gave me this number. I'm supposed to call his hotel and ask for Mr. S ask for Mr. Smith. And so I call I called the number and I asked for Mr. Smith. The guy, I told my name. Mr. Smith comes up. Oh, Greg! Oh, my God! You really he's, he's going crazy on the phone with my artwork. Wow. Uh, totally flipped out. And very knowledgeable about... We were on the phone for an hour. He's completely completely into... Which, uh, I don't know why it's a surprise, but, you know, I guess you can make your mind up about shit. And completely into American... Uh, history of American illustration. So oh. Not on, That's on, interesting. On, yeah, a Norman Rockwell fanatic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, all the rest of them, Jesse Wilcox Smith and 
he, he N.C. Wyatt, Howard Pyle, he, uh, Maxfield Parrish. I mean, he knew all these people. So we talked all about that stuff. And then he said, Did he mention Dan Pinocean? Did he say Dan Pinocean or? or uh... <laughs> weird. That didn't come up. He said, I think he mentioned Strange. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, so weird. Anyway. Very so, odd. Yeah, that's odd that well, it didn't well, come I mean, up. I got, then, Lauren, I mean, I spent a lot of time with him. And gradually came down to he wanted a, a painting for his home. And I went out to Neverland. And we're measuring the wall. I was going to paint this huge thing, you know, for him. And then, then I kind of lost touch, but then came back, and a friend of ours, a screenplay, where I was doing a screenplay for him, it was a musical, and it, it, it was great. I mean, he, they had a lot of people, like Tina Turner, all kinds of people, and uh, and I did some costume design for him for the film, and then all the crap hit the fan, shit hit the fan over the, you know, yeah, yeah. and everything just boom went away. But he was, I found him to be a very, you know, people say, oh, he's weird, right? Not, not when I met him, you know what I'm saying? He was mm -hmm. a, he's super hyper enthusiastic artist. I mean, that's what he was. And that's what I saw, and that's how we were together, you know? Wow. You read, you read shit like, after all that crap, and my son calls me, Greg calls me, and he says, Dad, you're in the National Enquirer. And I said, what the hell are you talking about? He said, he ran over with the article. And... Uh, there, it was some guy who, not to mention names, at at the place at Neverland. There at the time I was there, who was now selling his story to you know get his, sure. uh, what, you know, his fifty bucks or what the hell they put with him, and mm -hmm. he did. He says I walked. There was an East Coast artist, white hair. He explains me to the T. He doesn't use my name. He was pissed. Uh -huh. He wanted him to use my name. So, the so, least he could do is remember your name. Yeah. And he said, I walked into a room unannounced with drinks, and the artist was running for the door, zipping up his flower. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you know, at that point, you know, you really get, people are really coming up with stuff so they can make a couple of Yeah, yeah it sounds like something Jeff would do. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, Jeff has done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I, I don't know anything about that documentary. It's really not, it wasn't a documentary. Did you see that one? These two guys said, yeah. Yeah. I would probably call that a documentary because it was just all one sided, you know? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't know it. nothing about Dave watches, Dave watches a lot of uh, Michael Jackson stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I haven't seen that one. Michael Jackson stuff? Yeah, I mean, he's. <laughs> Just general stuff. Um, right, so got a you, this, is the type of, this is the type of person you're on a, um, a stream with, Greg. Draw, I mean, a lot of stuff he draws is a little peculiar. <laughs> what, I'm drawing, I'm drawing uh, red skull. Is that something? Doesn't but look here, like him. Here's the thing about this kind of stuff. I was never a Michael Jackson fan. I mean, I wasn't listening to the Jackson 5 back then. What the hell? I mean, I'm listening to either, you know, a classic um, 70s, 60s, 80s rock. In, in classical music, I mean, you know, in, in, so I, I kind of like was it was for me, there would have been people that would have given their left eyeball to be in the situation I was in. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I was, you know, it wasn't like that for me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It wasn't that kind of a situation. Hey, Greg, what, what, um, I don't know if the guys know, but you, you paint nose cone art on classic planes. Yeah. Yeah. How did that? How, how, well, first oh, of all, wow. saying a little bit guys, and, and how did that get started? How, how did you? Because that, that became a, uh, it's like a cottage industry for you. Yeah. I was in 1999. I said to Dean, I want to do paint up art. She said, you know, she's 14 years younger than me, so she was not sure exactly what I was talking about. She's a paint one, so I painted one. I painted, I painted a stripper. You know what I mean? A, a, yeah. a, a chick uh, done a bump and grind, sort of with the tassels at a kind of like a, a party for guys all dressed in their tuxes and everything. You know what I'm saying? Could have been a, a mafia party or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So she flipped over it, and then Mizell in New York had uh, uh, the Great American Pinup Gallery downtown, and he gave me my first show. And so I got I, I get a reputation for pinup art. A lot of people are bitching about it, saying, what, you do hobbits. What, what, what's this? What, are you doing? what the hell is this? <laughs> You're supposed to be here. Is that a hobbit? <laughs> yeah, that's hardly a hobbit. Always being pigeonholed. Fuck that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Anyway, 
so that word's out, and some guy in, in that owned uh, he has like fifty something warbirds. Wow! And he, <clears throat> you know, he's he, he can afford them, and he keeps them all up. He has a team of mechanics out in Texas, and he he uh, he had this P thirty eight Lightning. You know the you know what that is, and he wanted. He had photos of the original nose cone on that was all all gone now that he had repainted it all over now back to the OD color of the plane and he wanted to he wanted he got a hold of me and he wanted wow. to get and you were able to recreate that for him and yeah I knew instantly what the pose was when I saw the photo it was a Vargas I in fact I had the Esquire magazine that it was in from 1991 oh. that pose he so, found it clearly found the right guy yeah so I got out my Vargas and I didn't want to copy Vargas, so I, just, I got a model and posed her roughly in that same position, just so I'd have the sense that it was my model and that I'm, I'm not copying Vargas. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. right. and so then yeah. I did the drawing, and we, we and then you, you blow it up. I did, you know, I only draw it so big, and then we blow it up big to the, I think it was like more than life size. The girl was about seven feet long on the plane, and wow. went to Texas, painted it on the airplane. And then he, these guys, they got their private shows. They do, they do fly-ins all over the place, you know, down out west and stuff. And, and, and the, another guy saw that plane, and he had to have his plane. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, you know, the word got out, and I painted on, oh, my God, seven or, seven or so, so far. But I got a couple waiting for me out west. There's a doctor out there. And uh, so they're either a recreation of the original nose cone art and the way I would do it though. I tell them ahead of time, I'm not going to copy the style of that art on the plane. I'm going to do it my way and they're all fine with that. And, or the one, this one guy uh, likes to name his own planes because they were never painted on before. If they're, if they had a name already, that's what they'll keep that name. But if they haven't been named, they'll name it themselves. And then we meet and we talk and we discuss an image. You know, what, what he wants. And that's fun. And it's like I painted on a uh, B-25 bomber. This one guy. Wow. Had, it was supposed to go off to the war because we had the land new program with Russia in the war. And I think something like 15, 20,000 aircraft were sent over there. This one was ready to go when the war came to an end. So it sat in a hangar. And he bought it eventually. But he wanted to paint it up like it had been to Russia. So it was painted all the gray and black camouflage, put the red star on the tail, yeah. and he wanted, he, he named the plane Russian to get you. Hmm. So I said the obvious image, a Russian chick on a bomb, you know what I mean? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I started to look at Russian women's, you know, uniforms from the World War II, they're not so hot, you know what I mean? <laughs> thing. So I was looking at, looking at other more pinup military art from that time, you know, see girl art that was like little short outfits and everything. So I, I came up with my own sort of Russian looking sexy chick outfit. And I think like Dave. Hey, hey, Dave, Dave. Dave always does some really cool um kind of Russian propaganda yeah. artwork. He, he does oh, yeah. a yeah it's just fun to do. So so Greg two two things. Number one, I could see Ben getting physically visibly jealous because he only has three warbirds, <laughs> not, not 50. Uh, so he's jealous of that guy with 50. Uh, I want to meet the guy. Actually, we got, we got a question from, uh, from Gar Hyde who wants to know, uh, who's your favorite pinup artist? Uh, uh, Gil Elbert. No, no two ways about it. Yeah, he's, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, he's the King Kong of pinup painters. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. His, it, it, you know, that Sunblum look, that, that beautiful... His compositions, his drawing, I mean, everything about. Yeah. I would say Moran, Vargas. I mean, I don't. Vargas, earlier, earlier Vargas. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think when he. Elgren. Elgren's like, he was, he was amazing. Yeah. He was fantastic. And, and, and what, Bomb, too. Question I've always, I wanted to ask you, actually, for this was because, again, we, 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 we want to read chat. I'm always amazed at the different. You change gears and you change lanes so quickly, right? Yeah. And you do it all beautifully. And, you know, we've all had, like, weird projects we have to do in our lifetime. I can only imagine. Like, so was that toilet training book the, the weirdest thing you 
like when you look back in your career, like that's pretty much the the, the weirdest thing, or or is there something that you that's hidden in the, uh, yeah, yeah, that, the archive? That, 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 I, you took every fucking job you, you could get to make a living, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you're you're you know the the freelance illustrator. It's always like you take anything that comes in the door because you don't know what's coming yeah. in. And I, yeah. So the toilet training book pops up. Yeah. <laughs> you say, yeah, of course. It's like, holy shit, what the hell? It's then you got to deal with these two pediatrician guys on the back here. <laughs> yeah, they, they're all hold on, let me see them. Hold on a second, Greg. Let's take a good look at them. <laughs> what kind of notes you get from those guys? What kind yeah, of notes? <laughs> well, you'd meet with them and they'd write notes on your drawing, you're doing these sketches. Like my son, right. Greg, Greg Jr., I got him to pose. You see all these? Can you see these little? Oh. See that? Oh, it, 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 so embarrassing! <laughs> and he just celebrated his fiftieth birthday. Oh, it's so <laughs> embarrassing! It'd be so awful to be that guy. I think for his fortieth birthday, we got him a copy of this, which he never had. Plus, yeah. Dean found a, uh, a anti-constipation statue from like I don't know the thirties or something of a little kid right. on the toilet squeezing it. Take a yeah. shit. So that, <laughs> But, That's probably Dave. But then you, you say, well, I got to at least make it a halfway decent drawing. You know what I mean? What yeah. the heck can I do? Yeah. And yeah. It, 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 it isn't like it's weird. I, I hate it doing it. You know, it's like Joe Cuba said that it's like trying to make love to somebody that you, you know, you know what I'm saying? That there's yeah. nothing there. And you, oh, I know. It, right? Yeah. You got to get it up to pull it off, to do it, to make it satisfactory. And you get through it and you say, holy shit. Never. Yeah. But I think it was after this. That's when we said we got to go do something else. And That's we, where your career took off. That's, that was it. That was <laughs> That's a good motivator. Set. I'm not doing yeah. any more kids' proof books. Yeah. Yeah. You, should do, you should modernize. You should yeah. do a new version of that. Right? You should do a modernized version. Okay. We did, we did tons of this kind of stuff. That's in cool. The 70s. You know, it's for Golden Books. And you yeah. have to go do re all this research pre-internet. Pre, uh, I mean, go to the libraries. Yeah. And, and come up with all this hyper realistic little details of, you know what I mean? That was always something that stymied Jeff the library because of the reading and everything. Yeah, yeah I'm not. I'm, I'm slow with that. Looking yeah. stuff up always just took forever. But look at yeah. they said, look at these two critters are looking at each other through a chain link fence, fence, and we want the chain link fence very detailed. So it's right. like a little realistic chain link fence. You know what we oh, We made three thousand dollars for this. Yeah. And that's in nineteen. But three thousand dollars back then was about seven hundred grand. <laughs> yeah. Three thousand dollars in nineteen seventy is about four thousand dollars today. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Greg, I don't know if you can you talk about it. You you also met Brando, right? Can you Brand, talk about that? That was what, Mike, yeah. That, that was, was Michael Jackson. No, that was the, yeah yeah. That was when I went to the ranch. They, Michael said, "I want to see your paintings." So Gene packed up a hundred and twenty, hundred and fifty paintings, shipped them out. The Neverland Valley, and so Michael's looking. We bought some, and it's, I'm coming down to the last day of being there. And all these paintings were in this great big room that was the size of a kind of half of a of, of, a, of a gymnasium, almost quarter of a gymnasium, uh, of uh, a playroom filled with toys. You know, and you would have kids who were hospitalized come and and and, and very ill, you know, cure cancer and everything, and they had toys to play with, all kinds of stuff. And in any event, all the paintings were all around the wall. You know, I propped them all up so Michael could see them. Then other people would be coming up. And so I'm, I'm ready to pack them up. And he said, uh, when are you leaving? I said, tomorrow. But my mother. And he said, no, 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 you can't leave. Why? Well, Marlon Brando's coming tomorrow. So. Ooh. Yeah, you definitely can't leave then. Yeah, you can't leave, Greg. You can't see your flight. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, I, see, I, I always feel like a fish out of water. I don't know about you guys. I never. I'm always in these situations, and I always feel like I don't belong there. Or what am I doing here? Or why is it me here? And so, like Michael was enough. Yeah, I get that. that. It, yeah, Jeff knows that feeling all too well. <laughs> yeah, Jeff I feel like right now. Yeah. Right, yeah. right at this very moment, Jeff is feeling that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's just sort of a standard. Yeah, you're used to it. So Brando. Is coming the next day. So now look at this. This is pretty shit to me. I mean, I and 
So I'm with this guy who was kind of a chef and everything. He said, oh, who's your brave, favorite brand of movie? And I said, oh, I don't know. They're all, I mean, Viva Zapata. You ever see that one? Yeah, no. Like, Emiliano Zapata it, it, and directed it. It's all about power and politics and making it to the director's position and you become like Joe, that. you wouldn't be interested in that. <laughs> it, <laughs> great film, I, I thought. Anyway, so I say that. And then I'm nervous as hell. Now, Brando's coming. Holy crap, he's going to be here. You know, he's supposed to be driving in any minute. So I, I was in the guest house. And I said, I leave the main house and go to the guest house. And, and I'm wishing, oh, Christ, I should have brought some Xanax or something with me. And something, you know. And, and then it was like, I turned the TV on to sort of relax and watch a movie or something for an hour. What the hell's on the screen? Viva Zapata. <laughs> not shitting you. And I go, oh, Christ, the guy programmed this. So I go to the TV guy. There it is. It's listed. He was a pocket. So I don't know what any of that kind of crap means. But in any event, then the Volkswagen goes putzing by, an old beat up Volkswagen. And I can see it's Brando inside. And I go, and then I get the call. Come on in the house. So I go into the house in the kitchen. Brando, I don't see anybody yet. And then and we see uh, these couple of guys. His son's there. One of his sons, I forgot which one. And a technician who's installing a projector for Michael. And and they say, well, let's go upstairs where the room is, where the prison's at. So I go upstairs to the room with these guys. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really like, what am I going to say? What do you say? Oh, geez, I like your movies. You know, what the hell do you say? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I hear, well, and Michael knew I was nervous through all this. You know, he, he could, you know, I'm with you. And so I, I hear way down at the end of the room, let's hear it for Greg Hellebrand. Let's hear it for Greg Hellebrand. <laughs> and I see Michael very skinny, all in black with his black fedora. Behind him is this big gray shape movie. And the two of them walk in up, and Brando's like that was when he was what, I don't know, 300 pounds or something. And he was all gray with these big puppy, gray hush puppies, shoes, and, and sweats, gray sweat, and a gray floppy hat. And so he comes up, you know, kind of mumbles something. And famous for that. Yeah, it was very little. It was like, oh, my Lord. and Michael said, "Well, let's look at the paintings." So now, imagine if you guys have got your artwork lined up, right? I don't know what you feel. It's all lined up. Randall's standing next to the artwork, right on this side. I'm in the middle, and Michael's on my right, and he's starting to parade around the room, looking at my paintings. Oh, Brando he's freaking out. <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, so Brando stops every once in a while, mutters some unintelligible thing to himself. He stops it. And this is going on for like a half an hour. Wow. And, and he stops at one, turns to me, and he said, you certainly have the ability to see things through the eyes of a child. Huh. And <laughs> Michael, el Michael elbows me, and he says, he never says anything positive about anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. I love that. We, we finished this tour of my paintings at about 45 minutes, and Brando walks away muttering to himself, it's a whole other life. It's a whole other life. And I'm not sure what he meant by that. <laughs> then Michael picks up a water pistol on one of the tables. Huh? And starts squirting. A little weird. And Brando mm -hmm. picks one up and starts squirting him back. I There's another one they throw me. And the three of us end up in a water pistol fight with each other. That's, a That's the craziest story. thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Greg, I, I, I thought I you said he was just like a normal guy. I guarantee no one saw where that was going. I, didn't, yeah. I would have never uh, guessed that. That's interesting. I a million years. I think it's really freaky, man, the shit that happened to you. And then yeah. he walks away, and he's just kind of like muttering to himself about stuff. And, and they leave Wow. You know, it, it's yeah. kind of like when Dan and Jeff are together and they do those sword fights. We have a little giggle fest, is usually yeah. what we have. Yeah. I'm like a little so, girl, so, like a little Japanese Greg, girl. Greg, yeah, I wanted, to I wanted to read this comment because I think Jean would enjoy it as well if she's nearby. Uh, right. from, from Ted uh, uh, Laframbois. He Jean? said, uh, I always pictured Greg as a super wholesome guy, but he's more like the uncle that would tell you stories you were, you were way too young to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a perfect description of you. Uh, <laughs> well, when I, when I, my kids, you know, people, 
they could use any fucking word in the house they want, except anything anti-racial or prejudicial towards any nationality, religion, creed, or anything like that. Now, none of that shit. But any motherfucker cocksucker, I don't care what the hell. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Love it. It is, Uncle Greg. You, 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 you get it. I said, listen, don't go outside and do this. <laughs> Because people are going to blah, 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 blah. They're going to all have to, don't, I'm, I'm warning you, do not do this. In this house, you can say anything you want. I want to live there. That sounds like a yeah, great place to You need that type of freedom. <laughs> I, I you, do. You've never experienced it. No. Greg, you've been around Frank Terry, have you not? You know Frank? No. Good. Uh, good. Right. good. <laughs> no, no, no. That's actually the perfect answer. Maybe, maybe I do, and I, and yeah. I can't remember it, you know? No, you remember. Because I mean, you know, you know, forget. Hey, that's that, you know what that, that that tells me, Joe. He really is blessed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Greg has lived a blessed, blessed life. Dominic, Dominic, Dominic. Yeah. And fortunate. Blessed and fortunate all rolled into one. Hey, Greg, I got a I got a question. Um, I read years ago that uh, when you were working with your brother, sometimes you would go to bed and have a dream about something. And then you would wake up and he would be drawing. Is that true? Well, no. I mean, he we would have the same dreams. Well, that's, that's crazy. I mean, that's just yeah, we, I mean, but I mean, you know, it's all electric. I mean, it's all there's nothing I don't think supernatural about that. Tim and I, when we were in the army, believe it or not, I was in the army because that was the day, the, you know, the draft and everything. I but I didn't wait to be drafted. I, I, I enlisted right while I was in high school to get it out of the way so I could go on to Disney. I wanted to be an animator at Disney. So Tim and I both enlisted, but when we were there after boot camp at Fort Riley, at Fort Leonard Wood in the state of misery, you were at Fort that's Riley. Where went, that's where I went to basic yeah, training. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the state of misery. Fort Lost in the Woods misery. Yep. Yeah. And then we were in Fort Riley and, and the guys was, you know, it was like on a weekend. Oh, could be, you twins, do you have, can you read each other? Do you feel it when you one guy gets poked in the other? I said, I don't like that. Well, let's, can you read each other's minds? I don't know. Let's try. So Tim laid down on a bunk on one end of the barrack, and I laid down on a bunk on the other end of the barrack. And, and what, what do you think? Guy grabs a deck of cards, starts sticking them in my face. Tim picked up eight out of the ten of the cards. Wow. And, wow. and you, then what they did with Tim was they laid a bunch of objects on his foot locker. One of them was a Yale lock, you know, with that. That oval, you know, thing. And Tim looked at that. I saw it from his angle. You know, I didn't see oh. it. I saw it from the angle he was looking at. It. And, it, and it kind of comes in like a, like a, like a, you know, like a, a image, not a little super clear, but it's that it's electric, you know, electric electricity. Wow. Well, that That's and probably the cool. LSD you guys were doing back then. Right. Yeah, a lot of drugs. Sounds <laughs> like. Not yet. That wasn't that came on. <laughs> <laughs> That was with Elvis, right? <laughs> oh, I didn't do that much work. It was my choice. But I gave up all that stuff. Yeah. My favorite is I didn't do that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. it's, like, it's so just debilitating. My, I was drinking and my drawing got, and I'm not saying it's great now, <laughs> but it got shittier, shittier, shittier. It just got blasted and weak and not to the point and lazy and it's in fuck with me. I'm not so gonna Jeff, wait. Look, look what's happening with Jeff's right now. Wait, wait, hang on, let me take a swig of this. Total domination beer. Um <laughs> you, that's booze in there, man. You can actually draw and drink. I can. Gene's I'm drinking uh I think Ben, are you drinking this too? Uh I am. Gene's got a t-shirt. Very angry. I was gonna wear it's all scribbled. You've probably seen it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Well, you know, I used to do, I used to, that's beautiful. Man. Oh, that's nice great. work, Dan. Thanks. This is for a, uh, a part of a cover. There's a bunch of people are going to be doing it. See, you guys are really working on the problem. Let's see if I can, there. Now it's a little bit more. Nice. Again, that's really nice, Dan. Who did that? Um, I swiped it. I swiped the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Fuck swipe. no, man. That's excellent axe. <laughs> Thanks. Leaf mails up. That's fun. Yeah. Greg, one of our viewers wants to know if you uh, if you do any work digitally or if you're strictly traditional. 
No, I don't. I don't know how to work with it. I, I know how to get my reference off of this thing. Gene told me that last year. That's all I know. Because I, I it, don't get me wrong. It's not like I. There's no negativity in my mind about digital art. I, it's freaking amazing. It blows me away. No, but I don't. No, it's like pencil and paper and you know paint. Hair. Do you mind if we go back to a, I have a, I had a question about your nose cones paintings. Yeah, on the on the airplanes. Oh. Uh, what paint do you use for that? Do you have to have special nope. paint? Nope. Really? We searched it, and we said I uh, put the drawing, tape the drawing down onto the side of the plane. You know, do a, a, a piece of transfer paper underneath of it, and just do a ballpoint pen outline of the whole drawing. Put the back, sand it down, mm. sand the paint all down, so you get a little surface texture surface. Then Jean was doing all that stuff. We we'd go there together. And she would do all that preparatory work on the first plane and then sand it all and then white it all out with a base of white acrylic okay. and then transfer the drawing on top of that, you know, uh, with the black transfer paper and then start to paint it. And then they put a uh, 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 green. green. What, what did you put on it? Varnish. Jean varnishes it then. And then they clear. It's a clear lacquer. And then they, then and you can get it. And then, and then they, uh, the what do they call it? <coughs> clear coat of white paint. Okay. And you know they don't fly these things all around the joint. You know what I mean? They fly them into these shows, and stuff. so they're not in the air that much. They're not getting in. I kind of like to see the uh, the little speckles that would out. You know, just the the debris and whatever would happen from from the wind would. Yeah. It'd be yeah. kind of interesting. The B twenty five bomber was at a, at a, a flying at somebody's branch or whatever the hell it was, and it was on the landing. Bob Carden, who was uh, the lead, uh, you ever see the documentary on, on Glacier Girl? Anyway, that's a whole other story. Uh, Bob Carden, the pilot, he was starting to take off, and the left landing gear gave out, and the plane wing went down, Jeez. and started a fire, and a part of the nose cone arc got a little bit damaged. So I got to get back there and repair that. This is a little while ago, but nonetheless, stuff happens like that. But I mean, just a section of it got hurt, you know? Uh -huh. Jane's over there talking. She's directing. Can I say hi to these guys? Jeff, Jeff, do you ever, do you think like Jeff, Dave, I mean, Joe's had a fairly interesting life here and there. He's met a few people, one or two, but Jeff, after, after um, listening, I mean, take an assessment of your life a little bit. Well, I mean, I do that every day, and it's always depressing. Yeah, it's Jeff, never... think, think about all that you haven't accomplished. I mean, no, I mean that it, it doesn't keep me up at night because I take a lot of Xanax and I sleep well. But it's <laughs> it, it, there's, it's it definitely can be worrying sometimes that I'm not really doing anything. Well, yeah, I mean, you're doing that drawing. That's wonderful, but it seems like Greg's drawings have taken in places. Well, I mean, it seems like. Well, there's a there's a quality differential, Dan. That's really the issue. You, whoops, we just we just missed we just missed her. Oh, she ran out. I was gonna focus on there. What? Oh, bring Jean back. Bring Jean back. Yeah, yeah. Jean back. What? This what? is the only woman apparently that that could keep uh, Greg and Lina, I guess. Jean, Jean, do you think you could salvage Jeff's career? I mean, you're, Take you're, a look at Jeff. You're, you're you're the best art art manager on the planet. Take a quick look at Jeff. Look at his eyes. I mean, look I need at, help. Look at that face. He's, he, nothing, <laughs> nothing can be done. Yeah. I can't. I mean, I can't be saved. And he's drinking. Yeah. While, he's drinking. He's That's drinking right, while really? he's doing this. Well, I mean, that is kind of the show. A little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's it is in the title. Yeah. 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 It is. It is a good beer, though. Are you all drinking? Are you all drinking? Um, I'm drinking this thing called War Warbringer. It's the 109 proof. Oh God! It's very angry. <laughs> what are you drinking, Joe? Oh, I, I I rarely drink on the show. Uh, if I do, it's you know I'm the non-alcoholic. I'm the I'm the uh, designated uh, streamer. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's got to right. stay lucid. That's good. Is it better when you drink? You know, for me, my, <laughs> my style in all seriousness, when I when I began drink and draw, I was, um, at least my inking was very stiff, and I loosened up. I liked the stuff I did when we'd go to a bar or a pub, and oh, we'd, it'd be very casual drawing. It's it's almost like what you what you might do when you're doing an ink rough. 
Yeah. And, and you don't think anybody's going to see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, Dave Johnson would look at it and he goes, he would generally say, I like that better than, you know, what your finished cover work. And I started incorporating right. a looser. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dave, Dave still says it. But no, I, I do. I, mm -hmm. A lot of guys, a lot of artists, I find their rough work, when they're just, you know, flowing with a, with a pen, it's way better oh, it than is. when they're finished. Way totally. Yeah. You, you overthink things. Yeah. You, I try and make him stop doing his finished work a lot. Because, I mean, that thing should be running you, not you running it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah it, it, it helped me to loosen up. I, when I do professional work, obviously, I'm not drinking. I, well, maybe it's not obvious. But um, <laughs> yeah, but it did it did kind of op open the door in a sense to like wow you don't have to be that controlled. There's something nice that happens um, when you're yeah, when you're not. See the you thing know, is, right, Frank? It was like too much was never enough. Yeah, you're that's just that's a no, problem. Story. It's a problem. Now his Let's see what Dave is up to here. Our our daughter-in-law bought Greg a T-shirt that is. Uh, about you know forty pounds of paint dribbled on it, and it says "Don't drink and draw, Dad." Oh, yeah. So it, it's like, kind of yeah. that's, that's our anti motto. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You know, Paul O'Neill, Paul O'Neill, the the, the Trans Siberian Orchestra, genius. Uh, started with Sa his Sabotage, the heavy metal group, and then yeah, uh, he started. You know, Paul, I, Paul never drank, he never touched uh, any kind of drugs. And you know, for a rock and roller kind of business, that's kind of amazing. But we talked about that a lot. You know, he said he's seen so much of it, obviously, in music, people going over the deep end, and that he believed, you know, all of us creative people have work, it's an addictive nature, and you mm -hmm. know, you're addicted to this thing. And he felt he did, if he took that first sip of beer, it would be all over with, for him, mm -hmm. you know. So he never touched it, not me. <laughs> um, who, who's it? Is it Angus Young in ACDC? He's like a madman on stage, still is. I don't know how old he is, but the guy has more energy than my son, yeah. and I don't think he drinks. Hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's like, how right. can you can't sustain that kind of like physical, you know, thing for that long? Certainly, yeah. this man can't. It's more beer for us. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never understood. There's only so many beers out there, and I want to drink my share. Yeah. I, I used to put a case away of Lohenbrau when it was from Germany back uh, in, mm -hmm. in a city. You know? I'm going to leave you guys so you can get back to your beer stories. I mean, the stories we've heard, I don't know. We might have to censor it and edit this part of the live stream. The Frankie Yankovic song? In heaven, there is no beer. That's why we drink it here. And when we're gone from here, all our friends will be drinking all our beer. Sounds like, Jeff, Jeff, you should memorize that. Polish yeah. polka music. I love right. Polish polka music. <laughs> Jeff, Beautiful. what is well, now? Is this guy like an ex cab driver? What's the symbolization on these shoulders? This is a uh, um, it's Space Punisher. Oh, I was looking at the other other side there. Checker cabs. Yeah, he's on he's on his way to a, a fair, but it's Space oh, Punisher. He's a uh, he's a huge ska fan. Yeah. He's punk. Exactly. He's yeah. a punk, punk guy. That's beautiful. <laughs> now, is that for someone in particular, or you just do it on a on a whim? I did it on a whim. You have a lot of whims. The whims. I have many whims. <laughs> for a, a, a you know a commission for that. Jeff doesn't, well, doesn't just, uh, take like the commissions. Hey, Greg, are you still uh, Greg? Are you still doing stuff for the Trans Siberian Orchestra? Yeah, Paul right, died every year, right? His daughter took over uh, Ireland. She she was nineteen when her dad died, and she's right. twenty one now. She's well, I mean, you know, the operation is like a big thing, and it's an yeah. open, it's all set. You know what I'm saying? And 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 well, the band members and, and, and technicians and light show, uh, that's all. There are people who have been in the business for forty years there. You know, so Ireland comes into this thing, and First of all, dealing with her dead father, they were like this. I mean, they were incredibly close. And he, you know, he trained her a lot. She, she had a lot of writing, and she, she, she knows music. She plays, and and so, but she, she's creative. She's just gotta, you know, learn how to work into it and find the language. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she's fantastic. 
I mean, I love her. She's a great kid. And kid. I mean, you know, great person. Uh, anyway, that's less than, you know. I mean, 81 for Christ's sake. I can say kid, can I? Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, like, you get away with it. <laughs> no, I, and so I'm still doing their stuff. I mean, we'll be starting this year's uh, stuff. Jean does the program. She designs the whole program. And she looks at 35,000 photographs. There's like a half of the photographers that cover the whole last year's show. So they send her everything, and then she goes through it all, and we weeds it all down, and then picks the final stuff, and then go back and forth with everybody, Ireland and, and, and Adam Lynn, who's the, basically the director of the whole operation. And Adam's fantastic. And they're all great. I, mean, I love them all. They're fantastic. And they're great people to work with. You know, there's no... We're all kind of like on, on the same page, you know? Yeah. And we throw ideas around, and, and, and I, I like doing that. I like working with other people on stuff and building it, you know what I mean? Just gradually structuring over. So I'll, I'll probably start in the art in another three weeks or so. Wow. Hey, I, I got to I gotta gotta say my, my first exposure to you was a uh, Lord of the Rings calendar. And even as a young man, I was like, the the light that you would inject into your paintings. I mean, do you ever feel like you got gypped by uh, uh, Thomas Kincaid being called the the painter of light? I mean, you were so much better at it than he was. You should have had that title. I mean, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, no comment. <laughs> you know, no comment. I like that. Classic. Just, just, uh, Dave just wants just wants you to crap on other creators. That's yeah, Dave. Dave's a cruel person. Ah, he's dead. I mean, what does it matter? You know. It's <laughs> a good way to look at it. We don't want to talk about light. Let's go talk about Caravaggio for Christ's sake. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, or Rembrandt. I mean, I, I, are, are all the great illustrators, man. I mean, those are the people. Lightning, but I mean, I was always into photography too. You know, and and, and so light. Became, I remember those Technicolor films. You'd you'd be. You'd see, like I, I watched Disney's Treasure Island the other night. Well, oh, I haven't seen that since a long time. Wow. God, look at it just for the photography. Uh, uh, Freddie Young, the BBC, uh, British Society of Cinematographers. You've got the, just uh, simple setups inside the room of the 17th of Benbo, you know, in and, and the warm candle light and the blue light coming through the windows. It's fucking incredible. Who was that actor? Um, Robert Newton. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's he was incredible. And but I, I think seeing those movies, those Technicolor films back then as a kid, you know, Tim and I would be aware of that, you know, the warm and cool light thing, you know, mm -hmm. how extreme they would always get that. Man, I didn't, I didn't in, until I started um, coloring my, my work, I, I never understood just how complex color was. And I, I spend more, it takes me longer to color one of the covers I do or a page than it does to draw it. It's just you have a limitless palette. There's just yeah. there's no you know you can do so much storytelling just with the color. Oh my god, yeah, it, oh totally, warm light, cool light. Yeah. Okay, my first. So I mean that that was our obsession. So we were obsessed with that along with animation and special effects. And then I kept writing letters to Disney to go, and they said you apply for an animator, you go to an art school that mm -hmm. focuses on light, life drawing, perspective, and anatomy. So we found a little school in Detroit after we got out of the army and Meinzinger's art school it was this old line school that was reading right arithmetic. You know, they, it was back to the twenties and, mm -hmm. and, and Bill Meinzinger was a fantastic painter who ran the schools. His father started, he was like this little pencil mustache, bow tie, kind of like pinstripe suit kind of guy. And mm -hmm. the school was really straight like that. And but Mr. Meinzinger in his, he, he, there was, Perspective, anatomy, life drawing, color and design. And he read, he did color and design. And in the color and design course, he said, if there's a warm light on a subject, there's a cool shadow. If there's a cool light on a subject, there's a warm shadow. That's the way light works in nature. If you're looking at this warm tungsten light up above, Mm -hmm. Understand that that's warm and that shadow it may not look readily look cool to you, but intellectually know that it gets cool. Mm -hmm. Now, the degree of coolness becomes the issue. Is, is your chroma cranked up? Is it down? Is it middle range? The basic premise warm light, cool shadow, cool light, warm shadow. That gave Tim and me, like, you that's like the stone 
hitting the surface of the water when we heard that, you, you, you grasped it. But it took years for that stone to go hit the bottom and go clunk for that whole thing to fall into place. Really? Well, I mean, how, how long would you say it really took to resonate and then you were able to implement it in your work? That was, I heard that in 1958. So, I, Christ, I mean, it wasn't probably until the most open calendar that long. So, it really, in the 70s, maybe 15 years. Wow. Because yeah, I, I, mean, was, I, I was into all kinds of other stuff then, too. You know, I mean, I was into filmmaking, documentary filmmaking for six years. And then at Handy, the Jam Handy organization, Jameson Handy was the man that started this industrial film for this production house in Detroit. And that's where Max Flesher had been for 10 years. But Handy and Flesher were friends in the Bray Studios in the silent days in New York. And they, mm. they did training films separately. Mm. And then, then Flesher went on to do theatrical. You know, Betty Booth and Popeye. Did, and you, and did you ever work or, or live in uh, California? No. Uh, I, I've been there many times, but no, I've never lived there. I, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't like earthquakes, and I don't like uh, mudslides, and I don't like fire. Don't yeah, like there's fire. a lot of calamity. <laughs> yeah, we have a bad share. Yeah, there's a fair amount of calamity. Um, now it's interesting. I, I look. Um, Dave, Dave colors his covers very well, and I just, I, you know, you just keep learning things as you go, and I just, with, with the coloring, since it's so new, I always feel like. I'm just skimming the surface and I'm just starting to creep in there and you learn one little tiny thing and it, it's kind of mind blowing sometimes. I, you never stop. I mean, I don't, like, it's like to me, each time I start a picture, it, as many as I've done, it's like the, all the horizons recede and you're starting all over again. Yeah. New problems, particulars, <coughs> but, you know, you got, you got a basic bag of, you know, we all do, right? That knowledge that you're pulling out of. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. You want to, get thrown into something that into the white space so that you don't just keep repeating only what you know right yeah and so i like doing that and to me it's always it's both uh, terrifying and, and, and thrilling at the same time yeah i guess it keeps it exciting yeah greg uh, two things when i was going through your portfolio online that i thought were odd one you touched on already the uh Bishop Sheen portrait. Um, so you explained that. Uh, the other thing was the uh, the dummies, the like Charlie McCarthy style yep. dummies. Where does that come from? <laughs> I was obsessed, obsessed. One of the other obsessions as a kid was with puppetry, because I mean, on TV as a kid, that's what you had. Animation, old the cartoons that they pull. You know, Betty Boop is where I saw the first Betty Boops, and all the puppets. Cuckoo Friend and Ollie were hand puppets, and there's Howdy Doody, Mary Nuts. Bill and Cora Baird, who had a studio in New York, uh, theater in New York, they did a lot of guest appearances on it, like on the Ed Sullivan Show. They were really sophisticated marionettes, carved hands. Yeah, I remember the old you know, jazz musician playing the piano with a cigarette dangling out of his mouth. I got upset. And then, and then I saw, I think, uh, Edgar Berger and Charlie McCarthy and Mortimer Snurd was in a Disney film when they do those live action portions in like mm -hmm. Fancy Free and stuff. And I got obsessed with with those puppets and I started making them. Tim and I were making them. We would build our own. <laughs> what a career. I mean, that's crazy. It's not like yeah. it's like it's it's done everything. It, it, no, but it's, 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 it's interesting. Um, I keep up Dave with the hero worship, but like, um, you know, Dave, Dave has created some, uh, they have the uh, Metro Gala out here um, and people create these elaborate costumes for Halloween and uh, yeah, Dave has created some, it's it's like a it's like a gala and and everybody creates magnificent Halloween costumes and Dave has created some that looks like you know they they could be in a movie I mean they're they're pretty amazing and I'm always shocked yeah, that it's you know. Until you got them up close, um, but Dave, do you have any of those on your computer we can show? Uh, yeah. You can share this share the screen maybe. I, not on my computer, no. Oh, well, it's, they're pretty interesting, Greg. It, it's the same type of thing where I, I'm, you know, I guess if you have an interest in the arts, it it, it typically, like, sometimes you'll see a, a very good artist and they go, oh, you, you never knew that they could sculpt also. Yeah. You know? Costumes, too. I used to make them, like, a lot of, well, I still do it because I use, you know, illustrations, especially all the Lord of the Rings stuff and then anything. I, 
you know, you improvise them or you, you know, fake it some way or build a costume of some kind. But I started that as a kid too. Obsessed with that. And I always wanted to, you know, you'll see these eight movies, you know, the gorilla guy in the gorilla costume. And I'd make a whole suit and then figure out how to get the hair. And we was getting yarn and sneak it down, you know, and bust to the park to make the gorilla hair and everything. I'm going to tell you something, and it might be it might sound a little peculiar, but Jeff has this outfit, and it's also it, I mean, like a gorilla, it's it's jet black, uh, very shiny. It's all made out of latex, and then there's a little, I guess it's a chain that that goes around like this area, and um, a lot of times we'll be drawing in the same room, we're sharing a studio, and I get so into the actual drawing that I'm not recognizing that Jeff has left the room and come back in a black latex suit with like a uh, red, I guess it's a, like almost like apple or something like that in his mouth and a chain on his neck. Um, no, it's, uh, it's like, you know, how, like when you play handball, that ball that you hit against the, the wall, uh -huh. it's got a little, it's got a little, it's got a little give to it. That it's not an apple. That's what it is. Yeah. He can't talk anymore, but he's, right. he's very emotive. Yeah. Well, hey, I mean, Jeff, have you I ever seen a, uh... Jeff, have you ever seen Dan Saran rap costume? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody. There's probably two people that have seen that, and it's two people too many, Joe. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. great. There's oh. got to be photos of it around somewhere. I'm sure there are. So seriously, though, Greg, I have a question about um, when did you start yeah. doing? Yeah. When... <laughs> Greg, if you ever need, here's another job to hold up. Doc Watson, Earl Father Hines, and Shorty Carroll, like Tree Bop, this crazy fucking art director. Excuse my. <laughs> That's okay. That, that goddamn thing is painted on an umbrella. He's what? Like, <laughs> really? Wait a minute. I gotta move this around. I gotta get this. okay. He this art director, he had these crazy all oh, to get creative. So get an umbrella and paint this scene of Earl Hines getting out of a checkered cab on what is that, 57th Street, the Jazz Street in New York, or 52nd, whatever that street is. Uh -huh. In the rain. In a 57 uh, Wow. And Tim and I were why paint an umbrella? They're going to shoot the damn thing straight. But anyway, this could so now you would just superimpose that in Photoshop on an umbrella and be done with it. Oh, it's crazy. Well, I mean, these are the kind of nightmare jobs that you do because you've got to make your buck 25. You know? Yeah. <laughs> We've all done those. Wow. Okay, so when you, when you took the, uh, the, the Marvel card gig, like, were you a comic book fan before you did all those cool cards? Well, I mean, remember, I was born in, in 39, so I'm an original comic book kid. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's all we had. We, well, in, in, in the 40s, it was comic books in the radio. And then Saturday matinees in the movies, that's who we had. So every kid on the block collected comic books. I mean, we had stacks and stacks and piles of them. Junior up the street was the only guy that, I don't I don't even know his name, it was Junior. He was a tall, skinny kid. He had, we had go to Junior's bedroom. He had them all lined up on a shelf, all by title and clean and this is 1945 and you know like it's thankful for him that a lot of these things survived you couldn't touch his book he had to touch them. And it, uh, the stuck and him junior's in the millionaire today yes yeah, yeah junior knew it was what <laughs> i mean I, I, tim and i wait a minute like there may be some shit in here we would draw our own comic world i can't find it i know so were you familiar with the characters when you did those cards? Like did you they were laying out here, you know? Let's see. You know, you get just the panels. This is like nineteen forty nine. Wow. Some of it's acid free paper, some of it isn't, but looking at looking at that. Yeah, I was obsessed with comics as a kid. We drew a lot of them ourselves. I wish I had some of the damn things. I remember seeing uh Frankenstein meets the wolf man and and coming up and coming home and, and drawing that whole kind of the bike fight and everything like that. And we had tons of that stuff, Mighty Joe Young comic we did. And uh and then that became an obsession more on animation and then special effects. And mm -hmm. then moved into you know our career. And I never and I I I done so much stuff all over the place and I said to Gene one day, when the hell was it? Gene was like 1990? I want to do something in comics. He said, what? I said, 93. I said, I have no idea. I, I just want to move in there somehow. And did I, you have a I did you have a favorite character, Greg, like from, like when you were a kid? Yeah, like a superhero? Big, yeah, the big three. Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. That's, and Captain America. 
Did you like uh, the original Daredevil, the yellow yeah. and black? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, but I said to Gina, I'll do some comics. And she said, well, I said, I have no idea. I, 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 I was really fully prepared. We went over to DC first because, I mean, that was my, that's what I grew up with. You know what I mean? I didn't grow up at Marvel. I grew up at DC. Try so, telling that to Joe. Well, I mean, I mean, that's a fact, right? You know, yeah. The fuck. And so, but I mean, I went to DC and I only did one thing really it was a Spectre cover for the uh, uh, Oscar and Mandrake Spectre, which I, I loved that. I would mm -hmm. it. And I did that one painting, and that was it. They, they were very, uh, how, how to put it, not enthusiastic. So, and, <laughs> oh, <God>. and <laughs> so Gene, Gene called Stan, he said, we had met, I met Stan years before, uh, Epic Magazine, when I was trying to do Urshirak, they did an article in an Epic Magazine on us. And so, you know, I don't know if we talked, and, and so Gene called Stan and said, well, here, Joe Calamari. I said, that's a real name. <laughs> yep. So, so we, we, it is. Gene called Joe, we went over there, Joe just can't put on his desk. Uh, what do you want? I said, I don't know. And then, and then Tom DeFalco was the editor-in-chief, so, Tom is taking us all around, and Tom says to me at a point we were there for like an hour already. He says, Greg, can I ask you a question? And I said, sure. I said, what are you doing here? Hmm. And I didn't get the question. I don't know what he meant by that. And so he thought, I, uh, then I got it later. Oh, I'm an illustrator. Illustrators are up here somewhere, and comics are down here somewhere. I, that, fuck that. I never, that was a mentality that, for it, to me, comics were Caravaggio, for Christ's sake. I mean, wow. I just made a distinction about between any art form. I mean, you know, it's all magnificent. It's all the people that say that when well, comics, well, you know that. I mean, the, the Wortham thing and all that. But you write it. It was a comic book. Whenever in the movies in the forties, when they want to show a stupid guy, they show him sitting there reading a comic book. Yeah. You know, it was like mentality. That always like, pissed me off. <laughs> you know, I mean, it freaked me out. So I'm there and anyway. I said, he said, what do you want to do? I said, I don't know. And then he called what the next day, Gene? I think he said, well, how about a trading card set? So that's how that happened. Mm. So then, and they were, everybody at Marvel treated Tim and me like freaking rolling out the red carpet. I mean, it was incredible. Mm. It's well deserved, guys. Yeah, those were Greg, amazing. I remember those cards. Yeah. Hey, guys, I have to dip out. So. It's, uh, yeah, we actually ran. This has been such a great conversation, so Greg. We ran, we ran so over considerably, like an hour water. and a half. I didn't even. Yeah. Drink, I didn't even draw. <laughs> Here, can you scribble something on there real quick before Joe goes? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now it looks like you've been doing some drawing. Good. Yeah. This is the work. You ever work with this stuff? This is like you know reverse, you know what I mean, kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it's it's a series of, of uh, you know Prismacolor cool grades I use. I saw uh, Ivan Earl would draw his uh, backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah, he would start them out. It was just paint the cabinets uh, black, and then he would he'd go from there. I, you know, it's easier because all the, all the darks are already in there. Oh. Yeah. Right. Basically, it's like looking at the thing is all over. And, and I, I've taken the painting a lot, like a lot of the covers I do for you, Joe. I paint the whole canvas all black because once you put like the light source in, like a flame or a lightning bolt, boom, it's already lit. You know, mm -hmm. you, you know, and you know your darkest dark is there already. Yeah. You know, the think about where you're headed, so it's all there. So it's kind of like it's a lot easier to paint that way and draw that way. Mm -hmm. Excellent, makes sense. Oh, is it me? Do I get to say goodbye now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This has been this has been very informative. We've never had uh, this this brand of storytelling. Anyway. I got oh. a lot of hands. Where's, where's our first legend? We had our first legend on. This oh, is a it's legend. fantastic. It was Here. an honor. Okay. How's this? Wait, wait. Let's see. Looking at me. Right. Oh. <laughs> <They're> good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Perfect. You weren't kidding around. Oh, it's, it's St. Greg. Lovely. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> we are that kind of thing. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, especially Greg. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, guys. Hey, Greg. Can we yeah. do it again? Nah, Greg, I mean, anytime you want to come back, we'd love to have you. you it was an absolute pleasure. And, and I'll make sure that I get a little bit of drawing done. because It's a know, tiny bit. Yeah. <laughs> next, time don't, next time, don't be so shy, though. You yeah. Shy, Loosen up. 
loosen up a little. You know, you get to participate. You know, we like it when a guest participates a little. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need to drink, Greg. Maybe drink a little bit. See what oh, happens. God. Who, who knows what would happen? No, I don't like that. There you yeah. go. There we go. Well, thanks, everybody. And uh, we will see you next week. I get, Joe, will you be uh, scratching it, doing this? I should hopefully be up and working next week. It was a, it was a perfect storm of everything. Uh, whatever. All right. Anyway, All right. we're glad you were here. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, Cheers. everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. I'm really I'm thankful for, for doing this with you. Oh, ah. well, it's our pleasure. Our pleasure. Yeah.